Bidlin. It's Gil Alexander, Wyatt Tomchek, ladies and gentlemen, in for the vacation in Kelly Bidlin. Kelly will be back Monday, yes? I hope so. Not that we don't love you, Wyatt. I know, but we you know, love it, you too. I will say it's uh, I think to tell for Kelly, it's very rewarding that uh, he misses one day and everyone's asking where he is. Oh yeah, for you sure. Know. Kelly is Kelly is lovely. He's jovial. Makes yes. it a blast. Um, so we uh, we miss Kelly, but Kelly's having fun wherever he is in Arizona, With hanging Phoenix? out in Phoenix. That's so. you told me yesterday. I don't know. Yeah. I'm just going with what you told me. Um, he'll be back Monday, but Wyatt, kind enough to hang with us during the Sweet 16, and what a night it was last night. We'll get into all of it on the show today um, with Tyler Shoemaker, VEASAN writer, who has his own uh, mathematics behind his college basketball handicapping. He calls it the T-Shoe Index. You couldn't pull that off because you got a W. So it would be like the W Tom. It doesn't work the same way. No. I could do the checklist. Yeah, that's not the same. You know. T-Shoe Index for Tyler Shoemaker. We'll talk to him momentarily. Tim Murray, host of Prime Primetime, along with JVT. He's got college basketball thoughts for the second half of the Sweet 16 and for the first couple games in the Elite Eight that are, of course, lined for Saturday already. Uh, Michael Montesano, Dr. Bob. We're overbooked, ladies and gentlemen. We got guests. Uh, Paul Carr on soccer, uh, Premier League, Jason Weingarten on baseball, Nick Whalen will be by, talk a little NBA and NFL with us. Uh, let us begin with those. And, of course, we'll talk uh, about yesterday's opening day. As much as you can glean from one day of baseball out of 162, your Braves finally uh, play today, hopefully. I'm excited. How, hey, yeah. you know, uh, your Guardians, good start. <laughs> my Guardians, that's did right. You, did you see my how March, many, April bet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> did you see how many people were protesting outside? More than we're in the stadium. Yeah. And they're, they're, yeah. The announced crowd was, I think, was 13,000. I'm like, I wonder how much that was inflated. Yeah, oh, completely inflated. Completely inflated. That is really bad. After one day of baseball, there isn't much takeaway other than the Dodgers might be as great as you think they are. The Orioles, Corbin Burns was great, but their offense might be as great as it was, as you thought it was, but certainly in spring training they showed. And the flip side is the A's – and the Rockies, and maybe the White Sox, but certainly the A's and the Rockies corroborated everything we thought about them in day one of baseball, which is they could be epically bad. And what's the phrase I used about baseball all these years on a numbers game? The ever-increasing chasm between the haves and the have-nots might be wider than ever. We'll see. 162 well, games. Well, you talk about the Orioles. They destroyed the Angels. At what point do you think, uh, when does Mike Trout get on the trading block? The Angels don't look really good either. Mike Trout had that solo shot in the first inning, and that was about all she wrote for the Angels yesterday. Uh, basketball yesterday. We'll get some more baseball with Jason later, but basketball, wow, what a night. Um, let's do them chronologically. Clemson and Arizona. The 2-5 the game out west. 2-6 uh, game, pardon me. This was... Just absolutely unbelievable. Arizona, seven-point favorite. They lose it outright to Clemson, 77-72. to 72. And uh, where do you start? We should probably start with Caleb Love. Five of 18 for Arizona, including 0 for 9 from behind the arc as a team. As a team, Arizona was dreadful from behind the arc. Actually, Clemson wasn't all that great behind the arc either. Um, they were 8 of 25, but, but Arizona was 5 of 28. Now, part of this... And again, it's the whole whole two thoughts in your head at the same time thing that you have to do. Brian Anderson and Jimmy Jackson were praising Clemson's defense, uh, their three-point defense in this game. Sometimes you just, just get the best of the other team missing open shots, too, and Arizona was dreadful. But Caleb Love, like the signature shot from Caleb Love, Caleb Love, who's always been a streaky player, whether here at Arizona or previously at North Carolina, the signature shot yesterday was it was early. It was 11 to 6 Clemson. Arizona only led in this game for 20 seconds. That's it. Uh, but Caleb Love, that running one hander from three point range about nine minutes into the game when Clemson was up 11 to 6, sort of represented everything about Arizona last night. Like, what was that? What was that shot you just, you just threw up there from behind the arc? Um, Clemson absolutely deserves this and i don't know if you remember i had the, the you know all year we've had the three man weave guys on uh maddie cox jim root and kai mckeon and at one point i did with each of them a which coaches do you trust in college basketball bit and i was making a bit of it myself because you know what's the last thing you're supposed to do as a host of any show on radio or television whatever it is then question the the guest answer or grade the guest answer so as soon as i would ask about arizona and i would say do you trust tommy lloyd each one of them said absolutely and i would immediately come back with i'm sorry that's the incorrect answer right <laughs> and so last night i have to say 
uh, Arizona fans, listen, they had no answer. Tommy Lloyd, excuse me, well, we, yeah, Tommy Lloyd had no answer for uh, Diallo's slow footedness on defense. Uh, Schiffler and Hall, Ian Schiffler and PJ Hall, played that two-man game, it seemed like, a million times where they could, at will, get themselves a layup. Inbounds passes couldn't be defended to save their lives for Arizona yesterday. Um, so any which way you slice it. By the way, it also gets to the point where Arizona was in the double bonus, too, and they didn't exploit that offensively. But it was really on defense where I felt like Tommy Lloyd and Arizona had no answers whatsoever. And good on Clemson. They are in the Elite Eight on their way to taking on uh, Bama, which we'll get to momentarily, which we should, we should get to now because there's really not much to say about UConn, which was the next game up yesterday. UConn continues their absolute savagery of this tournament, and uh, they just blow out San Diego State, and UConn, the presumptive favorite in all of this, not the presumptive, but the actual favorite in all of this, wins by 30. So, yeah. There you go. By the way, I just mentioned Arizona has o only led that game yesterday for 20 seconds. UConn has trailed in this whole tournament for 28 seconds. So was that against uh, number 16 seed Stenson? That'd be the funny. That part. was last night. Oh, I think well, 28 night, seconds. Okay. Yeah, I believe so. Um, okay, about Alabama, North Carolina. Clemson's going to play Alabama, obviously in the Elite Eight on Saturday. That's tomorrow. Two football schools, two generational football schools neither of whom have ever gotten to a Final Four in basketball. One of them will by virtue, first of all, the matchup is by virtue of Alabama's 89-87 to 87 upset of Carolina, the number one seed in the East. Bama the four seed. Bama gets it done 89-87 as much as you can blast Arizona, which I did. Uh, Carolina, boy, oh boy. They themselves with trouble last night down the stretch. A lot of people... You know, you look for where, where was the moment, where was the fulcrum in this game that turned it? And a lot of people say it was Armando Baycott's missed dunk with over six minutes left. Sure, that didn't help. Uh, people say oh, that changed the momentum. Got a lot of that on Twitter last night. I mean, maybe, but the fact is, is that Carolina still increased the lead uh, from three at that point to five a little bit after that. Um, and there were still six minutes left in the ball game, six plus minutes. So yeah, that, that didn't help. But Withers three-pointer, with just over a minute left and Carolina up one with 15 seconds left on the shot clock. That was the moment where even Jimmy Jackson uh, on the broadcast, who again, I thought, you know, in, in that Clemson game where they were saying, oh, Joe, Clemson's great three-point defense. No, some, sometimes the other team just misses. Um, but he got this one right. He just out loud was like, what, why, why? Jimmy Jackson said out loud. And, uh, of course, Grant Nelson comes down court, gets the bucket in one. Grant Nelson, the transfer from North Dakota State, was the star of this ball game. Uh, was everything for Bama in a game where Bama didn't have Latrell Wrightsell for this game with a head injury. Uh, they did not have a fully fully uh, healthy Pringle as this game got down in the final moments. And yet... Bama had enough from Grant Nelson, 24-12, and had five block shots. He was the star of the game. He made the biggest play on defense. I mean, I, I tweeted this out yesterday. Who had the Grant Nelson will dominate this game to the Alabama? They have no defense all year long, makes a massive defensive play parlay. The Grant Nelson Alabama D parlay to win this one. Um, he made the block late after uh, Alabama had taken the lead. That, that uh, bucket and one after the errant shot by Withers with just over a minute left after the errant three-point attempt. Alabama never would relinquish, relinquish the lead after that. 89-87. I also thought Carolina was terrible in that last sequence where they took seven seconds down to 1.9 seconds, and they ended up with a two. That didn't really help matters either. I also thought Brian Anderson and uh, Jimmy Jackson missed the point when Grant Nelson missed the second free throw with just a tick of the clock left. That's the correct play to miss that shot. It's actually a better outcome to miss that second free throw. They seem surprised by that at the end. It, it's, <clears throat> you know, I, I call women's basketball, and it's amazing how men's basketball is so much different in college basketball than any other basketball, you know, with the halves. And you can't advance the ball. I'm hoping to see uh, men's college basketball at least change that. But yeah, that's the reason why he misses. Like you got to go 90 feet, hook up uh, a, a desperation shot. There's no chance. We uh, 
we were guessing the line as this was becoming apparent that Alabama was going to win this game in the final stretches. And I guessed seven and a half, which happened to be right in favor of, uh, um, pardon me, in the, in the other game, pardon me, the UConn-Illinois game, I guessed seven and a half. That immediately came out at seven and a half, immediately ticked up to eight and a half. Um, we didn't guess the Alabama Clemson one, but that came out Alabama favored by two and a half. That got ticked up to Alabama three and a half against Clemson tomorrow in the two elite games that are already established. By the way, about Illinois, uh, Iowa State, if you had Iowa State, Iowa State has no excuses in this one. Illinois led as one point dogs pre flop. They led by 10 at the half, having missed nine free throw attempts. Iowa State had only missed two, but Illinois missed nine free throw attempts in the first half and still led by 10. Also, uh, Terrence Shannon Jr., best player on the court, he got in foul trouble. He had to leave uh, with over 11 minutes left. Didn't come back till six plus minutes later, and Iowa State was only able to cut the lead from eight to four. Um, he obviously, Terrence Shannon, made the, uh, the huge steal and jam to seal the deal late. Illinois wins at 72-69. So Bama and Clemson on one Elite Eight game. Illinois, they get the uh, tall task of having to beat UConn. If UConn crushes the Shannon Domosk danger trio, if they crush that team, it might. This whole thing might just be a wrap. We're coming back. College hoops with Tyler Shoemaker on the other side. It's a numbers game at Beeson, the Sports Betting Network. A numbers game on v the sports betting network. Start your morning with a daily dose of winning strategies, insider tips, and the latest buzz with the free v daily newsletter. In today's newsletter, all about college hoops, of course. Games gone by, but primarily the four games tonight in the Sweet 16. Look ahead till tomorrow. What a weekend of college hoops it ought to be. Get expert analysis and the latest odds delivered straight to your inbox. Absolutely free. Don't cost you nothing. Visit Beeson.com slash newsletter to subscribe. Here's the thing, uh, Wyatt, I will say this about uh, last night. If last night was the first night of the year you watched college basketball, and the reason I bring this up is because I actually said this to somebody who, who was their first night. Um, I, won't tell, I won't say his name out loud, although he wouldn't, he's one of these guys who wouldn't be embarrassed either. He's just a, a better. Um, but I said to him, I go, if this was your first night, I didn't know it was his first night watching. I go, if this was your first night watching college basketball, knowing nothing else about the sport, you would have thought Grant Nelson was the Wooden Award winner, hands down. You'd have been like, that's the player of the year, right? And I said it to him, and he goes, you know what? It was my first night, and that's exactly what I thought. So there you go. Uh, just an unbelievable performance. Your prophecy, Gilly. You know, you just... You oh, no, no, no. Oh, I, I wasn't being prophetic. I just yeah. had no idea that he, he was that guy. Yeah. You're like, oh, oh okay, yeah, well, congratulations. <laughs> yeah. UConn is very good, and they're probably going to win this tournament by yeah. about 20 points each game. <laughs> Yeah, I have, again, I have a, I have Alabama Futures tickets, which I got in June, the first one. And do I think it's going to win halfway through the tournament? Because remember, in terms of games, it's just halfway through, right? Three games done, three games to come, potentially. I don't, because you run into UConn, and UConn would be their final four matchup if both advance, and then there'll be huge dogs in that game, and that sucks for hedging purposes, and... Now, the UConn plus 180 to make the Final Four a different story. You expect to, to win that one. Um, let's see what Tyler Shoemaker says about all this. A special numbers game investigation reveals that this is not the Tyler Shoemaker who played football at Boise State, but instead it's VEASAN's own Tyler Shoemaker, who is the uh, not only a VEASAN writer, but a creator of what he calls the T-Shoe Index. He joins us now via the Progressive Guest Line. Nice to meet you, Tyler. How you doing, man? Hey, guys. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Can you explain what the T-Shoe Index is? Yeah, so in, in simple terms, I, I wanted to be able to answer the question, how many points would Team A score and allow versus Team B? And that, that applies. I do that for men's and women's college basketball, WNBA, uh, college football, NFL. Uh, and so it's just a very boiled down, you know, I, I put in all the inputs and it boils down to how, how many points above or below the average team in your league are you? And that, that's really helped from a betting standpoint, obviously, um, create some pretty good edges. Were you a numbers guy, like, you know, traditionally, or did you just come to this later in life? Uh, kind of later in life. I mean, funnily enough, I, I wasn't great at math, uh, you know, throughout school, but uh, I just, I got really interested in, in sports betting in general. I listened to, you know, a ton of podcasts. This is going back seven, eight years. And I was like, you know, I see some of these number systems. I feel like I could do something like that. And it's, it's evolved over the years and it's, it's, 
now it's it's much more automated and advanced than it, it was certainly five, six years ago. But um, it, it's always a work in progress. I love it, man. I love it. Um, how has your college basketball season gone? How has your tournament gone? College basketball has been OK. Um, th just above profitability for on the men's side. But on the women's side, it's been fantastic. We've um, I, I think I'm about 40 games over uh, 500 uh, betting women's. I, I mean, there were there were several weeks throughout the season where as soon as I would put out my bets, the whole market would move four or five points on, on a game. So I uh, really, really had an impact on the women's market this year in particular. Oh, wait. So forget about this men's garbage that we're talking about. What, <laughs> do you have any plays in the women's moving forward here? Anything? Have you have you dived into it yet? I, I have. Um, I didn't have it pulled up. I do. I do like UConn. Um, against Duke and I also like the over uh, in that game here this weekend. Okay. All right. Not to put you on the spot, but you know, figured it's great <laughs> at women's way. So we'll say that. Okay. Um, all right. To the men's uh, specifically tonight, the second half of the sweet 16, may it be as awesome as last night was. Um, let's start chronologically by tip tonight with NC state and Marquette in the South with Marquette, Tyler Kolick and Marquette favored now by a full touchdown, seven points with the total at 151. Any thoughts on this ball game? Yeah, I actually uh, gave this out in my Friday article on vcin.com. I, I like NC State plus the points here. I only project Marquette as about a one and a half point favorite in this game. Uh, my total is much more in line with the market. I'm about 149 and a half there, so not a huge edge, but, but I do like NC State plus the points. When you look at how these teams performed over the season and especially how they've performed late NC state's kind of surging up in terms of how their power rating looks and Marquette's kind of going the other way. So uh, when I see that type of trajectory of, a, of two different teams going in two different directions, I, I definitely want to want to jump on the team trending up. All right. Next tip is the Midwest region. Number one seeded Purdue Boilermakers against Gonzaga. Tommy Lloyd fell by the wayside in terms of uh, coaches we've sort of knocked on this show. I'm sure others have as well. Uh, and here comes Matt Painter and Purdue, who are trying to get to the Final Four, trying to erase the memory of the 116 loss last year to Fairleigh Dickinson. Purdue favored by five and a half, total 155. Yeah, not not a huge edge on this game. I, I would maybe lean Purdue here. I, I projected it at about seven. Uh, Purdue minus seven. Project the total at about one fifty-seven and a half. So not not huge edges there. But I would I would maybe lean Purdue here. Maybe lean Purdue, but not really uh, your cup of tea in this one in terms of a bet. Yep. Uh, all right, back to the South region. The winner of NC State Marquette will take on the winner of Duke Houston in the South region. Duke Houston is the four-one game. Houston. If you ask folks the question, all right, UConn's the best team. Who's your second best? Most people would still say Houston, I guess, although they've certainly made a mess of their last game. That's for sure. They are favored by four here against the Blue Devils. The total is low, as Houston games tend to be, 134 and a half. Just anecdotally, Tyler, it seems to be a lot of love for Duke. Um, I don't know where you stand on this. Yeah, this is actually uh, the second game that I put in my VEASAN article today. I Houston was number one in my ratings pretty much throughout the season. Um, but here lately, I mean, they are trending way down. Their, their power rating over their last three to five games is significantly lower than their season-long number was, whereas Duke is kind of trending up. I actually make Duke a, a small favorite here. Basically, I'll pick them, maybe Duke minus a half here. Uh, and I'm a little bit on the over as well uh, at 137 and a half. Okay, back to the Midwest region. Winner of Gonzaga, Purdue, takes on the winner of Creighton in Tennessee. Rick Barnes trying to get to a Final Four. Uh, he's a uh, Tennessee Rick Barnes team. Three-point favorites over Creighton in this ballgame. Total at 144. You know, one of my favorite things is is being on X during a Tennessee game during March because I, you just see all the Rick Barnes and March tweets. Don't do it. <laughs> so... Uh, I, I actually project this similar to how I have Houston Duke about a pick them. I would maybe make Tennessee about a half point favorite here. So I like Creighton in this spot. I actually would probably lean pretty strongly to the over. I projected at 148 and a half. Oh, man. OK, so the, so again, the three that you like, uh, which do you like the best of the bunch? Or is that an unfair question? You like them all equally? 
I think I would probably go NC State plus seven. I, you know, I, I like to get points and, and getting seven here in, in a tournament game that I project at, at one and a half. I would I would probably take that as my best bet if I had to pick one. Um, I, I also really like Duke here uh, as well. All right. Rick Barnes, by the way, got to one final four back in the early 2000s when he was the coach at Texas. That was in the 2002-2003 uh, season. Since then, in all of his March Madness appearances as coach of Texas at Tennessee, Sweet 16, round of 64, Elite 8, round of 32, Elite 8, 32-64, 32-64, 32-64, 32, my God. That's what got him fired from Texas, by the way. Then he's at Tennessee uh, a couple years, didn't get to the dance. Then 32, Sweet 16, round of 64, round of 32, last year, Sweet 16. So this is... Uh, an attempt to get not quite as far as he's ever gotten, but he's starting to get the cusp of Tennessee. Uh, Dalton Connect and Tennessee can win this game tonight. Uh, back to the women's side. Again, I know you haven't necessarily uh, called it up here in terms of your games, but give us the team that you generally overvalue, or that you have higher than the market generally, and a team that you generally have undervalued per the market. Higher than the market, I would say, well, if you'd asked me a couple of weeks ago, I would have said Ohio State, and then they just kind of face-planted in the, the Big Ten tournament and then, you know, in their second-round game against Duke. Um, I mean, even though South Carolina obviously is is always a heavy favorite in their games, I still have been able to find some value and, and lay some pretty big numbers with them this year, uh, funnily enough. And then on the underrated side or overrated side, LSU, I do have them as my number three team, but in terms of their point spreads, uh, the market really shows them a lot of love. I'd also throw Iowa in that mix. Iowa tends to get a lot of love, um, and I've been able to fade them a couple of times, taking points with some underdogs and, and cashing those. All right, Tyler, appreciate it very much. Um... You know, when the women's tournament's great too, and the same, the money is still green, and the money is still the same currency. So we appreciate that. Thank you so much. Nice to meet you, man. Yes, sir. Nice to meet you. Thank you. All right, you can follow Tyler, by the way, on Twitter at T Shoe Index. Shoe as in shoe, S H O E, like shoemaker. There you go. His last name. Not the Boise State wide receiver. Not the Boise State wide receiver. Again, we looked into it, and he corroborates. Tim Murray on the big dance, host of Visa Primetime. Uh, which he does with JVT here weeknights at the network. He's got thoughts on college basketball, having played the game himself as well. We'll get into that. College basketball cavalcade. Some baseball, some NFL, some NBA as well. It's a numbers game at Visa, the Sports Betting Network. numbers game on v the sports betting network. Today is the final day to sign up on a v Pro annual subscription and get your first year for only $199 instead of the typical price of $240. Just use promo code ANG. That's for a numbers game. Get VEASAN Pro access to everything we do for the entire year, including our daily best bets with the leaderboard to see which VEASAN expert has the hot hand, betting splits to show you where the money and bets are moving for every game, betting systems, premium analysis, 24-7 video access, plus access to our March Madness betting hub. That's with picks for every game of the tournament. Remember, this offer expires today, so sign up today at VEASAN.com slash subscribe and use promo code ANG. Gil, that is A-N-G, the three most important letters in the alphabet. There he is, ladies and gentlemen, Wyatt Tomchak. Get your first year of Visa Pro Access for only $199. Sign up today at visa.com slash subscribe. How proud of yourself are you? That I, was, you I was ready to go. I was well done. The, I, my finger was right here ready on the, on the mic button. I was like, I'm not going to screw this one up this time. Let me, let me ask you this, Wyatt. So I was in a survivor pool. Was, by the way. I got knocked out on Sunday. I went all in on Colorado with my last one. Not all in. I was down to one entry. So I, I lost with Colorado. Um, over 2,200 entries total in the survivor pool that I'm in. Five days of play, right? Four last week and then the one last night. We don't play the first four. Five days. How far down do you think the 2,200 plus entries have gotten to? Ooh. What's your guess? I think this is going to be a trick question. I'm going to go with 35. 145. Close. Okay. But that's how few are left. 145 in just five days of college basketball. Which one was the one that knocked a lot of people out? Do you know? Well, last night it was Arizona. Okay. For sure. Uh, we bring in Tim Murray. He's a survivor player. Not necessarily in that pool, but he plays survivor as well. He, of course, is the host, the co-host of VEASAN Primetime, along with Jonathan Von Tobel weeknights here at the network. Tim's a big college hoops guy. How you doing, Tim? Courtesy of the Progressive Guest Line, of course. 
I'm good, Gil. Uh, yeah, I was, uh, you know, I was telling you a little bit off air. I was, I'm in a survivor pool too, a little bit different, uh, less, much smaller. Uh, me and JVT were both uh, in the same pool, and he went Arizona, uh, and uh, I decided, kind of last minute, I'm gonna go Iowa State. So for about an hour and a half, when Arizona gets knocked off. I'm thinking, man, I made the right decision. This is what you need in these survivor pools. You know, all right, we're, you know, we knocked out half the field. And then lo and behold, Iowa State battled. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's funny. It, it's also too, Gil, when you know how it is, as, especially we as betters, you know, oh, if Iowa State just made these layups because yeah. they were terrible, they couldn't make the bunnies. But then on the flip side, I got to be real with myself. Illinois was what fifteen to twenty nine from the free throw line, yeah. so you know their their inability to make free throws allowed Iowa State to stay in that game. But uh, no, a pretty fun night. Um, you know, obviously, I think you know we can get into it. Obviously, we got four more games tonight. But UConn Illinois, I think, is really fascinating. Where it looks like you know UConn is on that you know, 2015 Kentucky type of path where it feels like, well, this team's unbeatable. Just hand them the trophy. And as we know, uh, as we know, just ask the people who live in this city in 1991, there's no such thing as an unbeatable team. Yeah. Okay. Hold that thought. Let's bookmark that. We'll get to that momentarily. Yeah. I want to just go back to yesterday yeah. for one second because you're, you're 100% right about Illinois, Iowa State. I started the show by saying Illinois missed nine free throws in the first half. They still led by 10. And then, and then, Terrence Shannon gets in foul trouble, right? And is out of the game for six, for six, um, you know, minutes of the game. And Iowa yep. State can only cut the lead by four points. Um, so there's that. Oh, do you agree with my assessment of Tommy Lloyd also from last night, which is oh. they just, Arizona seemed to have no answers for simple fun. You're, you're a guy who played basketball. Your guy's been coached up. You know, fundamental basketball. There were inbounds plays they had no answer for from, uh, from, uh, uh, you know, Illinois. Right, right now. I'm sorry. No, are you saying from Clemson? From Clemson last night. Pardon me. Yeah. Uh, the yeah, the Shifflin PJ Hall two man game, even when it wasn't an inbounds play, seemed unstoppable. They couldn't disguise uh, Dallow being so slow on defense. I mean, am I right about that? Like that just seemed like coaching malpractice. Oh, I mean, and, and think about the so shot selection late in that game. And and you know, if you bet Arizona or have Arizona you know, in your bracket or whatever it may be, you're going to look at this, the stat sheet and say, well, look, they, you know, went five of 28 from three. I got, you know, they just had a terrible shooting night and Caleb Love went 0 of 9 of three. That's true. But if you watch the end of that game, um, just the execution and the lack of, of plays yes. was, you know, what, what people have knocked Tommy Lloyd for since he's become the head coach there. The talent is there. Uh, this is a team now that has been knocked out three consecutive years as, uh, you know, earlier than anticipated, um, you know, especially when you look at the last two years. But um, look, I, I bet Clemson last night uh, that I expect them to win outright. No. Uh, and I was joking with you. I was I was fully anticipating because there are moments in that game where you're like, all right, here's the Arizona run. <laughs> yeah. and, you know, credit to Clemson. They, yeah. they had answers. They were very, uh, you know, disciplined. Uh, they weren't really hitting their shots. And, uh, you know, they're able to, to pull off the victory. And look, this this tournament, it's uh, it's called March Madness for a reason. This is a team that was, you know, from New Year's to the start of the NCAA tournament. They were a 500 basketball team. They had a great non-con, uh, really kind of up and down in the ACC regular season. Hell, they lost to Notre Dame, you know, a couple weeks ago. <laughs> and then they're in the Elite Eight. All right, Tim, let's let, I want to get to the what you wanted to talk about about tomorrow's yeah. games. So what's your favorite bet tonight or what have you bet tonight yeah i bet two games tonight i'll try to go quickly um look i feel like i'm on a bit of an island here i laid it with houston uh i, I get it you know duke has has looked the part this reminds me a little bit of last year uh, i'll run through it real quickly duke last year in the first round faced a uh, trendy upset pick in oral roberts uh they were only a six point favorite against oral roberts in a 5-12 game and the blue devils blew them out they beat them uh, by 23 and Tennessee, who they ultimately played in the second round, uh, very physical team, struggled, beat Louisiana Lafayette by three. Everybody in the world seemed to be jumping in on Duke. Tennessee kind of out physical and made them uncomfortable and uh, and ultimately won that game uh, by uh, by 13. Flip, fast forward to, to this past weekend, right? Duke blows out James Madison, your trendy upset pick, uh, catching seven, seven and a half. The, the Dukes were. 
And then Houston needs overtime to prevail and hold on for dear life against Texas A&M. Why Texas A&M was able to come back in that game was they just attacked the glass relentlessly on the offensive side. Duke is pretty good uh, at getting to the offensive glass, but not anything like Texas A&M. And I just believe that the backcourt of Jamal Shedd, LJ Cryer, it's going to be really challenging for Duke to have sustained success tonight. So the worry I do have is this not going to be an up-tempo game. Both these teams want to play it slow. You look at the total at 134 and a half, but ultimately, Gil, I think Houston's going to going to bully the, the Blue Devils a little bit. I think they're more of a finesse team, Duke, that is. Uh, if uh, John Shire needs this as uh, bullets and more material, go for it. But ultimately, I think this is a little bit, a little bit of a buy low, sell high opportunity here for, uh, for the Houston Cougars. And then lastly, um, you know, I like Houston laying the four more so than this pick, but I took some money line on Tennessee. Uh, I get it. Rick Barnes in the NCAA tournament, I believe he's four and 16 ATS uh, since uh, 2010. That's not ideal. Uh, but these two teams profile the way that they play, and I'm looking at tech, uh, Tennessee, and I know it's a different arena, so your kind of regression numbers, whether it's positive or negative, necess don't necessarily carry over uh, because Tennessee is, you know, was in Memphis last weekend, and now uh, they're they're going to be uh, in Detroit. But you know, for me, I look at. Dalton Connect, I think he's going to have a big game here. Um, you know, the Blue Jays are an elite shooting team, the last team to beat UConn. Uh, they have the capabilities of, of getting red hot from three. But I think Steven Ashworth, the point guard for Creighton, really is going to have a tough time getting things going. Uh, you've seen him, you know, bury some threes. Uh, but ultimately, I think Tennessee wins this game. Uh, I would look around for the cheap money, cheapest money line price. Uh, I laid a dollar forty-five. So those are my two plays, both late night games. I went with Houston lay in the four and then uh, find the cheapest money line price out there on the Vols. All right, give me a brief capsule on the two tomorrow. Alabama's taking a little money. They're up to three point favorites against Clemson, but the big one, uh, as you alluded to, UConn from seven and a half to eight and a half already against the uh, the Illini. Let me just ask it this way: If yep. UConn is to lose in this tournament, is this the team that will beat them? I would say this is the team that will give them the most trouble before the championship game. Okay. Uh, I do not expect if UConn wins on Saturday, either Alabama, even though they can get hot from three, or Clemson to really give UConn much of an issue. I think what you hope for with Illinois, if you're looking to, to knock off the beast that is UConn, is a team like Illinois, the best offensive team in the country. Terrence Shannon, when he gets a full head of steam, is 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 really hard to slow down. And you know, I think for the most part, last night Illinois survived a bit of a a clunker from the offensive side of the from the offensive side of things for their standards. So, look, call me crazy. Uh, I had laid it with UConn last night. Uh, but uh, I'm waiting for this thing. Give me a nine. Give me a nine and a half. I think Illinois Gill has a chance. Haven't gotten to the window yet because I'm not racing to. I just think people are going to keep betting UConn. Rightfully so. Danny Hurley and the Huskies now 9-0 and ATS in their last nine NCAA tournament games covering by a ridiculous margin. But uh, I'm going to wait and see and uh, try to I'm going to track try to attack uh, Goliath. That is UConn here. So give me a nine. Give me a nine and a half. I'm, I'm going to wait and see because I think this offense could potentially hang with the Huskies on Saturday. Tim, I appreciate it. Sorry about Survivor, as always. My Survivor condolences, yeah. but yeah, it's Survivor. What are you going to do? Uh, thank you, man. Appreciate it. We'll all be listening tonight. All right, boys. See you guys. Tim Murray, everybody, from VEASAN Prime Time. Michael Montesano with big college basketball thoughts. That's on the other side. Numbers Game, VEASAN, the Sports Betting Network. A numbers game on v the sports betting network. There's never been a better time to have skin in the game with DraftKings Sportsbook because right now we have a v exclusive offer for new DraftKings customers. Earn a $500 bonus bet for every $1,000 you wager. That is quite the offer. You can earn up to $2,500 worth of bonus bets in your first three days on DraftKings. Do not wait. Download the app now. Use code ANG when you sign up and earn a $500 bonus bet for every $1,000 you wager now. It's Gil Alexander, Wyatt Tom check in for Kelly Bidlin, live from Bar Canada at the D. We get tweets at Beating the Book. Always appreciate that. Uh, Mickey Baca, uh, I know baseball and March Madness are right in front of us, but when are we going to start talking NFL draft? Bounce back year is less than a month away. Oh, we've been talking about it. Uh, just that in the middle of March Madness, it's not really uh, the thing. We, we mentioned some J.J. McCarthy stuff the other day. This is from, uh, let's see here. 
just call me Skip. We need more NCAA hockey picks. <laughs> Yesterday, Randy McKay uh, threw Bill Krakenberger, had a couple uh, dogs. One of them hit, so it made a tick of money on the two. The other one might just have been uh, been a winner also. Got to double overtime, I think, the plus 195 play Ooh. on UMass. Got that's to overtime, tough, but that's a tough loss. Yeah, double overtime. Jeff Levine, is Adley Rutschman a value in the American League MVP market at 25 to 1? Since it came up June 2023, the O's have gone 91 regular season series without being swept. So there is uh, votable and eye test evidence that he is the MVP on a true contender. Y your logic is 100% right, except he plays on a uh, on a team that's going to have a lot of offense from a lot of people. So I don't know that I would necessarily make that because there'll be the whole which teammate was best argument coming prime time not sure what i'm looking forward to more the uh illinois the uh excuse me the uh oh the bama the illinois bama final four matchup he said i have futures on both or the new going postal segment with jason weingarten and mlb picks and post office travels with j-dub gold jerry gold uh jamie leva the word shoe reminded me of i can't wait by new shoes i figured younger gill would appreciate the reference uh, i can't wait Mr. Uh, Mr. Bomb Apple, love the show. Oh, he doesn't like a commercial. Got to get past that one. Uh, let's see. This is from, oh, and this is from Chris Velika, who uh, CCs me on this. This is from Optistats about Tommy Lloyd. Uh, he says the Arizona Wildcats have now lost to a team seated at least four spots below them in each of their last six NCAA tournament appearances. That's the longest streak by any team since seating began in 1979. Tommy Lloyd has been there for the last three years. We bring in Michael Montesano, everybody. Circa Million Booby Prize winner from uh, Circa Million's first year, but a college basketball sharp who has helped us through uh, the latter part of the college basketball season into the dance conference tournaments as well. He joins us now courtesy of the Progressive Guest Line. Um, I got a couple things to say, Michael, off the top. One... One, um, you know how we always go into these tournaments and we're, we, we think about, you know, I talk about the formula, but one of the big things is always think about teams that have great guard play, right? And Kuzi Award finalists, and I get it, we're right in the middle of the Sweet 16, but here are your five Kuzi Award finalists. Mark Sears from Bama, Jamal Shedd from Houston, Tyler Kolick from Marquette, Braden Smith from Purdue, and Tristan Newton from UConn. Sometimes it's just that easy, huh? Yeah, I mean, college basketball, if you go back and look at the, the several of the past champions, you know, you need great guard play, especially a point guard. And uh, all those guys are terrific, terrific players, and they're leading their teams right now. It's like the point guard is, is really the captain on the floor, and uh, you need special players like that in order to advance and to win a national championship. You were the first person who alerted me to Grant Nelson going to Bama. This is June of last year. I didn't act on it initially, but then I started putting it together, and I'm like, oh, my God, what an offseason this team is having. So thank you for that because you were the first person all over that being a big deal. What are you? What was your biggest takeaway from last night? Arizona just being um, bad, and I've gone through the coaching stuff from Tommy Lloyd already, or was it the fact that Bama overcame Carolina? I think I mean it's kind of a combination of both, but I think for the most part is Bama overcoming Carolina. I mean, when you look at their numbers defensively, they just shouldn't be in any of these games, and and that's been the narrative. Well, Alabama, they can score, but they can't stop anyone. Well, they got the most important stop of the game last night, and they were they were down two players. It shows their resiliency. It shows their their toughness. And their non-conference schedule was brutal all year. Let's go. And no one talks about non-conference schedule when we're into the tournament. And if you go look at their games, they lost a close game to Creighton. They lost a close game to Purdue. Uh, they, lost, they, they played Arizona tight for 30 minutes. So those, those add up. And that, that resiliency at the end showed uh, uh, pulled them out at, at the end of that game last night. Yeah, no right cell with the head injury. He, was, he didn't even suit up. And then Pringle getting hurt later, and they still got it done, 89-87. to 87. Uh, What do you like best tonight of the four games? All right, I'm, I'm going to go to the NC State Marquette game. I'm going to take a different path with this. Um, so many people have the love for NC State, and rightfully so. Marquette is a team that can score, and they're playing very, very well up until the Tyler Kolick injury. At the last six games, they were three uh, before, you know, they were three and three when he was out. Three of those losses, uh, two to UConn and one to Creighton. Very good teams. Up until that point, 
Marquette had been steamrolling. They've been playing really well. I'm going to look at their full season numbers instead of their last five or their last 10, because without Kolek, it kind of skews those numbers. I've got Marquette in a full season, minus 8.6. And with a lot of love going to NC State, and, then, and it seems like the market's heading that way as well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump on Marquette minus the points tonight. Wow, okay. With Marquette tonight, laying the wood with the Golden Eagles. What else? I'm going to go to the Gonzaga-Purdue game. I, I think the, when I was on the, the show with you going through my brackets, I have Gonzaga beating Purdue in this one in the Sweet 16, and I'm going to stick with it. Gonzaga matches up exceptionally well on the inside. I think they can they can limit Edie a little bit, and their guards are playing exceptionally well in this one. If you go to the last five and last ten, both the uh, numbers that I use, they're relatively even. Uh, full season, Purdue obviously has a little bit of an advantage. Um, Gonzaga, I, I, I think I've texted you a few times, vastly underrated team. I'm going to take Gonzaga plus the five and a half in this one, and I think I'm going to sprinkle a little bit on the money line. With uh, sprinkle me, man. Anything else tonight, or you want to move till tomorrow? I'm going to go. To, I'm going to look at the Creighton Tennessee game. Um, uh, full. I have Creighton futures. I have, they have three futures left. Alabama at big numbers. Creighton at 45 and 40 to one. Um, I know the the narrative out there. They got lucky to beat Oregon, and they did. They did get lucky, but we have to eliminate that that last game and go on to the matchup today. Tennessee has not been playing well lately, especially offensively. There is the Rick Barnes factor in the Sweet 16. We always have to think about. Uh, my numbers have this uh, at basically even. Um, if you look at the full season numbers, I have Tennessee minus two, but I always incorporate last five and last ten. It's, it's even. If Creighton gets hot from three and Tennessee doesn't, uh, Creighton could pull this upset. I'm going to take Creighton plus the, the three in this one. Anything Duke Houston or are you staying away? I'm staying away from that. My numbers were right on that. Uh, Houston's not playing, you know, they have not played well two of the last three games. And it's a, it's going to be a, a, a slow tempo game. I think, uh, um, you know, it's possession by possession. I'm going to stay away from that game. All right. Um, Illinois UConn came out at seven and a half. It immediately went to eight. It immediately went to eight and a half. People can't get enough of the Huskies, and why not? They've trailed for 28 seconds of this entire tournament. They are blasting teams. Um, I'll ask you what I asked of Tim Murray moments ago. If UConn, if I come to you from the future and I said UConn lost to somebody, which is the team whose profile is the one most suited to do that? Is it the Illini? I don't. I don't think it is the Illini because they defensively their metrics don't add up. If you look at UConn, they're they're top five in offense and defense, and they seem to really be clicking at the right time. Danny Hurley's doing an amazing job with them, keeping them motivated. They're not just happy by uh, winning by six, seven, eight points. They want to cover the margin and they want to set the tone for the next game. So I don't. I don't think Illinois is the team that can beat them. I don't really know who can beat them right now. Some team's going to have to get extremely hot from three, and that team could be Alabama <laughs> because <laughs> Alabama has some athletes if they can get to that game. Um, but we'll, we'll worry about that down the road. Uh, my numbers have UConn minus 9.3, so kind of right around where the market is right now. I'm probably not going to touch it. Um, I have UConn futures to get to the Final Four, plus 180 plus 130 and plus 110, so I'm just going to root for them to get to the Final Four. Yeah, me too. I got my uh, UConn Final Four future. What about, I know you have Alabama futures like I do. Uh, are you touching, if you didn't have them, let's say you didn't, would you touch the Alabama-Clemson game with Bama favored by three? I think I would. I, I think I would go lean towards Alabama. If you look at the first game between those two, um, kudos to Clemson. They went into Alabama and beat them, but Alabama did not play well. It was close to the end. Alabama was only 12 for 32 from two-point range. I don't see that happening again. I think the athleticism that Alabama has, I, I, I think they're going to get the job done. I don't know if I'm going to bet it because I have Alabama futures, but I, I, I think they'll play a, a lot better than they did the first game. Yeah, and that one immediately went from two and a half to three and a half. Some threes back now, but three and a half is probably the consensus still. Michael, appreciate it. Good luck with all the bets, my man. All right, thank you very much. Have a good one. You too. Little soccer break on the other side. Paul Carr joins us. What a game in the Premier League.